1230 WDBZ, the buzz of Cincinnati, the Lincoln Ware Show till 2, and we're getting there fast. In the studio with me, Dr. Jeff Zipkin from the Urology Group and talking about prostate screenings and things like that. And by the way, before we start, uh, you will have a uh, you will you will have a screening on this coming Saturday from 10 to 2 at Southern Baptist Church. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. It's this Saturday from 10 to 2 at Southern Baptist Church in uh, Avondale. We will have urologists uh, there, and they will be able to perform the screening. The screening is a very, very simple procedure, and you really don't need to worry at all about it. It takes less than five minutes. It's absolutely free. The screening involves a simple blood test. And oftentimes we also do a prostate exam. Even those who are afraid of a prostate exam should be assured that it really doesn't hurt and it's not a big problem. And even if you don't have the exam, come on down for the screening. It's absolutely free, no insurance. Please come down. Uh, speaking of that uh, PSA there, what about the uh, – it was on TV about there. Uh, this medical group says uh, not necessary. Yeah, well, you certainly brought up an area that's a big headache for us <laughs> urologists. Yes. Yeah, when a, when an important group like the U.S. Preventive Task Services uh, recommends against prostate cancer, you can bet that a lot of people take notice. Urologists, oncologists, patient advocacy groups, and even many congressmen are just outraged by this report, and we find it a, a bit shocking that a, a governmental agency or a pseudo-government agency mm-hmm. can make such a recommendation. Was it all about money, you think? Uh, because uh, they, it's, they, not, it's not really about money. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it for a minute, if you wanted to save money, you just wouldn't send anybody to the doctor. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if everybody just got sick and we didn't treat them, we'd save a lot of money. But we're hardly uh, going to do that as a society. We take care of our people and we want to take care of our people. And one very good way to take care of men is to screen them for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer screening makes a huge difference. Now, what about uh, at what age should uh, all men begin uh, to have their prostate screenings? Uh, And does it matter by race? It does matter, and there are differences. Generally, a man should begin being screened for prostate cancer at age 50. But some men are in a higher risk category, which would include a man who has a brother or a father or an uncle who had prostate cancer and uh, people with certain exposures. And unfortunately, African-American men have a higher incidence of prostate cancer. Because of that, we recommend that African-American men and all other men who are at a higher risk begin screening at around age 40. Okay, around age 40. Yeah, 40. Okay. It's not too far off for many of us, 40. Now, you've got a big race coming up in September. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Great Prostate Cancer Challenge. Yeah, the urology group supports the Great Prostate Cancer Challenge. Unfortunately, men are a little bit behind women, and and we learned from the women with their breast cancer that one way to get people to be aware of it and to make society more healthy is to do these public service events. Breast cancer has a tremendous number of them, and now we have started the Great Prostate Cancer Challenge race, which we do every year in Cincinnati. It's a 5K walk or run. It'll be on Saturday, September the 8th, and begins at uh, Joseph Sanker Boulevard in Norwood, which, by the way, is where we are dedicating our new uh, office facility. Okay. And now, and also, uh, the big O, Oscar Robertson, will be the, uh, he's the chairman of that race, right? Yeah. I mean, I was a little boy. Oscar Robertson was like, you know, God to me. He was, he was fantastic. We all watched him on TV. And, And what a thrill to have him as our honorary race chairman. He is also a prostate cancer survivor, and you can bet that Oscar Robertson stands behind prostate cancer screening. All right, uh, let's go to the phone. MT, you have a question for Dr. Zipkin. Yeah, real quick. Uh, Doctor, uh, I was over at uh, Southern Baptist last time, and I I did the blood test, but when y'all don't come up with another test for that back door, I couldn't take that. I had to leave. (laughs) Yeah, right. I just couldn't take it, man. I'm serious. Uh, But uh, when y'all don't come up with another way to do, you know, that test, without going into the back door. Yeah, right. Back door. That's really cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That is cute, isn't well, it? You know, back door. You know, okay. I hate to have that test done, too, and many yeah. men hate oh, to have yeah. that it's test. Just, you, it's just, uh, Lincoln is, like, crying just talking about it's it It's just here. not, 
you know, but you have to have it. You, I mean, it's you best have to have if it. he can put his finger and feel any growths or anything like that, any nodules or something like that. Is that, I mean, that is right. It, it is another tool. The blood test is the most important, but the rectal examination is another tool. Now, there are ways of doing rectal examination that hurt a lot less, and, and we are, as urologists, are pretty good at it. You know, I think give it a try and you'll find out it really isn't that bad. But unfortunately, it's one of those things that does help and has to be done. Now, uh, if, what if you have a, an enlarged prostate and it could, uh, I guess, it could affect your urine flow, That's correct? right. An enlargement of the prostate affects the flow of urine. And in severe cases, you can stop urinating altogether, which, of course, is a very serious and dangerous condition. Enlargement of the prostate, though, is not prostate cancer, and the two can exist independently of each other or simultaneously. Uh, Just because you have symptoms of an enlarged prostate does not mean you do not have prostate cancer, and it doesn't mean that you do have prostate Mm -hmm. cancer. And while we're on the subject, somebody just mentioned to me, what about erectile problems? Erectile problems are not really related to prostate cancer, so one way or the other, it has nothing to do with it. Keep the two separate. Go and get your prostate checked and worry about the other later on. Now, uh, with the enlarged prostate, you give them stuff like Flomax and uh, what is that other stuff you see on TV? Rapaflow, Rapaflow and, 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 yeah. and Proscar. There are many, many drugs that are effective for an enlarged prostate cancer. And, of course, there are surgical procedures when necessary. All right, 749-1230. Got a few more minutes left here with the doctor. And uh, the you, you, the screening takes place at 10 a.m. at Southern Baptist Church, and it's free. They don't have to pay anything for the screening? Absolutely nothing, and there's no charge to your insurance. It is a totally free service and, I would add, quite painless. Uh, how, much, uh, uh, how much greater is the risk of prostate cancer for African-American men and uh, what can they do to, you know, maybe prevent prostate cancers and anything? It's a diet or anything. You know, once a few years ago, they said uh, if you eat meat, that's charcoal barbecue, you know, you it, that would cause prostate cancer. Is there anything you can do to prevent it? Yes, you can live a healthy lifestyle. But your first your first question first, African-American men, unfortunately, have a 30 to 40 percent higher risk of getting prostate cancer. And they get prostate cancer generally at a younger age. And we also feel, although it is difficult to prove, that they have a harder uh, course with the disease. So it's all that much more important that it be found early. Also, death rates among African-American men are as much as two to three times higher than uh, European men. So and is that because keep, not getting close. checked or medical insurance? Or what's that? Why is that? You know, it may be that it's not getting checked, but there also are, are probably just significant DNA and genetic factors here that aren't completely understood. But getting checked is the way to ensure that you get the best possible treatment. With the best possible treatment, cures can approach 100%. All right, Benny, real quick. I guess one quick question. Uh, when one has a low testosterone count, they'll give them drugs in order to help elevate that. But one of the side effects I read was that it can cause your prostate to get enlarged or possibly cancer. Uh, should one be careful with that? I know that's the reason why you go to the urologist, but I'm kind of shy away from that because I don't want to take care of one thing and cause another. Benny, you are you hit the nail on the head. Life can be very complicated, and sometimes you do one thing and you get other consequences. Using testosterone to treat a testosterone deficiency may slightly increase the risk of prostate cancer. However, it is probably outweighed by the fact that you, you may need testosterone replacement. So that is a very, very tough problem and has to be decided individually, and I would suggest you know, get the courage together. Go into the talk to the urologist. We're really very nice guys. Most urologists are very easy people to talk to, and we'll, he'll go over the situation with you. And they only use one finger when they're giving you the prostate <laughs> screen. <laughs> hey, Benny, what are you? You having symptoms of low testosterone or what? Oh uh, yeah, I, I have it. I already talked to the doctor oh, okay. about it, and I, I'm, I'm on the regimen. But that's just from my looking at the, uh, you know, the. Uh, 
uh, implications of them, the side effects, yeah. the contraindications of medication, you know, I, 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 I kind of shy away from that because I don't want to yeah. cause the uh, yeah. test. All right. I mean, the, uh, if the testosterone helps, large. if the testosterone helps, Benny, you should stick with it. But be sure you get your prostate screening. That's the takeaway message. All right, final call, DJ Key, real quick. Yes, I'd like to ask, you know, he mentioned that, the doctor mentioned that uh, that black men uh, are more at risk. And I would like, I didn't hear why, I mean, because I know our diet is basically pretty much similar to other races' diets. So what makes black males more at risk of getting prostate, uh, prostate cancer? Yeah. All right, hang up and listen. Thanks for your call. That's a very, very good question, and it deserves an answer. Unfortunately, we don't have the answer. It is definitely not diet. It's not socioeconomical status. It's not any of the things that are commonly blamed for such discrepancies. It probably is a genetic factor. Yeah. It also may turn out to be that with time, the difference will decrease. But currently, that's about the best answer I can give you. It's probably genetic, probably in the DNA. All right, if you want to get the screen for prostate cancer this coming Saturday morning, 10 to 2, Southern Baptist Church, located right there at 3556 Reading Road. Make sure you get out there and get the screen for prostate cancer. Dr. Jeff Zipkin from the Urology Group, thank you for stopping by. Thank you, and please come to the screening and also the race in September. All right, the big race in September, that's September 8th. It's a 5K walk or run. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you once again. And don't forget, this Saturday morning, 10 to 2, Southern Baptist Church, 3556 Reading Road, right there in the heart of Avondale. Thank you both. Appreciate it. That's going to wrap it up for me. I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. right here on 1230 WDBZ.